Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTGO codes, the Potown store is the place to go. You can even use the Omnipoke code for an extra 5% discount on your order. For today's video, we're going to be looking at another non-GX deck in Spiritomb. Uh, there's been a few different builds of Spiritomb kind of floating around right now. It's not seen like a huge amount of success or anything, but a few people piloted it at Worlds, and it's one of the most promising non-GXs that we have. Uh, there's obviously some glaring issues with the archetype, uh, things like Espeon and Deoxys spreading is going to be something that really is ugly for you. Um, also things like Spell Tag in Malamar, so we've had to get a little bit creative to try and um, work in ways around some of these otherwise pretty poor matchups. And um, we're trying to use a handful of Ultra Beasts in here to sort of fill out the package, um, to have some nice power spike turns, um, some good type coverage in some cases, and even Beast Game GX is a cheeky way to close out games as well. So um, the build is a little unorthodox. There's a lot going on. 22 Pokemon is like the majority of the crea uh, creativity is all in the Pokemon choices. So we'll be going through that in a moment. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this archetype is one that a lot of people have been experimenting with. And um, if it can get past some of its like initial um, issues, I do feel like there is something here uh, to be said for this build. So let's jump into the archetype. Starting off with three Jirachi. Uh, it's one of these things where you'd really like four, but this, this list is tight. Um, we are playing so many different variations of Pokemon to try and cover matchups that I don't feel like we have space for a fourth, but... Nevertheless, Stellar Wishing, you know, not necessarily on turn one or whatever, but throughout the game is going to help us dig for more supporters, dig for hustle belts, uh, dig for custom catcher combos as well, which is uh, always pretty nice. So uh, three is still a reasonably high count. Um, you will start with it sometimes, and obviously you have better odds of hitting Elm turn one when you do, which is great, um, but not the full four copies. I just couldn't really justify a space anywhere else in the list, which is a shame because I'm already cutting a lot of corners here and there, which you might notice throughout the video, but yeah. Um, we're playing for Spiritomb as our main attacker. Uh, building Spite allows us to put a damage counter on this guy once per turn. And we have this Anguish Cry attack, which does 10 base for a single dark. And you do 30 more for each damage counter on this guy. Um, so we're doing a base of 40 after one Building Spite. Um, we can also Rainbow Energy this guy for a base of like 70 on turn 1 potentially, which is actually reasonable. Uh, I mentioned that number because it knocks out Jirachis, so... Uh, 70 on turn 1 potentially is good for tempo if we need it to, but for the majority of the time we're going to be trying to work even lower into our own hit points uh, so we can get uh, Hustle Belt activation and try and get towards this, you know, 160 damage plus range really with this attack is what we're looking for. So uh, yeah, Spiritomb can be a bit of a beat stick. His damage cap with 5 um, damage on him is uh, 220 with the Hustle Belt. So yeah, pretty powerful stuff overall. Uh, we also have Shrine in here to maybe push that even a little bit further if we need to against things like Picarom and such. If you can s swing for 220 and then have Shrine Ticks, you can really put them in a bad uh, spot. So yeah, the Spiritomb is, in some matchups at least, our main attacker. And it's something that we weave in in most situations. We then play three copies of Hooper. I'm definitely going to respect Malamar right now. It's kind of a little bit on the uptick now that people are all pretty much focused on the Spell Tag Mali build that's playing like a split of, of Viridian and Power Plant. That's kind of gaining a little bit of traction right now just because of things like Mewtwo uh, coming back. Obviously Super Scoop Ups going out of Ability Zard and um, Picarom all sort of makes Malamar kind of like a well-positioned deck right now. So having Hooper in here is going to try and stem the bleeding that we would otherwise have against um, Malamar as Spiritomb. Having three copies of this guy and Absol can really slow them down. And if they're committing their um, spell tag math towards the Hoopers, that means you have the freedom of putting down things like Jirachis, putting down things like Zeb Striker, knowing that they're not just going to get spread all in one go and uh, get knocked out or whatever for free prizes for them. So the Hoopers distract their spell tags a lot of the time. We even have Jinx in here as well, which can ruin their spell tag math in certain situations, which is really cool. So these Hoopers are chunky, annoying uh, for Malamar, which is a pretty big deal. He does serve other purposes, though. Um, he is, again, a chunky Pokemon. Uh, this is actually really good against Mewtwo in early turns. Uh, Spiritomb is pretty weak, and it also lets them do things like Solgaleo attacks, which sets up multiple Mewtwo's, which makes life very scary for you. Now, with our 130 hit points and the nice Psychic Resistance, oftentimes, even if we're just hitting for things like 70 or whatever damage with our Hooper against things like Mewtwo, which is like a pretty common damage to hit like on turn 1 or 2, um, they will be under pressure, and it means that we're protecting our Spiritombs, and they have to commit to attacks that aren't um, 
Solgaleo as well. So that's a pretty good deal for you. This Hooper's good in a couple other matchups. Like, you can also just chip in on single prize knockouts as well. Um, abilities are does play a lot of abilities, the hints in the name. So Hooper's good for just peppering things up in certain cases. Um, as well as just being, like, more hit points against Malamar, which is a pretty big deal. Absol, I'll just touch on it, seeing as though I was already talking about it. Evil Admonition is a really annoying ability, especially for... Uh, Mali, because they often rely on their escape board pivots on things like Jirachi. So we're going to try and make it so that we have this Hooper army against them that are annoying to knock out, and it's even harder for them to get set up. They need even more Malamars in play and such. Uh, so hopefully they can miss a beat here and there. Similarly, we're going to try and slow down things like Ability Zard, make them only use like one Jirachi a turn rather than having the option to like pivot, then switch, and then find all these combos together. Um, and again, just trying to buy turns here and there right now. It's also good against like a lot of Picaron builds trying to use Jirachi. So I feel like this is one of the only decks that actually has the space for something like an Absol, uh, like board space a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty decent card for that purpose. Um, carrying on with attackers, we have Baby Buzz in here as our first Ultra Beast to mention. Sledgehammer is clearly good against uh, Picaron. Um, another reason why Hooper can be pretty nice is because he forces two Electro Powers out of a Zapdos. Um, so if you try and use that, uh, you're more likely to get, uh, Sledgehammer activation, which is a pretty big deal for you, um, because it's obviously a nice one-hit KO against a Picarom or a, uh, a Choo Choo with, like, Shrine Math or with, um, Beast Energy as well, so that's obviously a nice burst of damage, and 120 in general matchups is still good, it means you're building Spite in the back, essentially the longer Spiritomb has to not attack, the better he gets, so... Trying to throw things like Buzzwall and Hooper in those opening turns is definitely a good option for you. Another Ultra Beast we have is Duskmane Necrozma. Um, you may be surprised to see him in here. Uh, he's not like a commonly played Ultra Beast by any means, but Dust Shot's actually a pretty good deal for us here. You do 60 for 1. Uh, we are already playing Rainbows, of course, and Beast Energy. So 60 to one of your opponent's uh, GX or EX. Again, it's doing some early supplementary damage, um, but the main reason in here is because it's a sniping attacker. I mentioned that Spiritomb can do like 220 as a maximum, and we would have Shrine ticking over as well. Um, and this means that we don't need to find customs to finish off our tag team. We can just hit them with a Dusk Shot and uh, clear them off the board as well. So this is a nice card to have in here as a one-off. Um, he's bailed me out of a couple spots when it's hard for us to accumulate customs as well. So this is a nice guy to have in the list. We also have Buzzmosa rounding out the Ultra Beast package. Uh, Jet Punch can similarly do that role of finishing things off if we've damaged them and they've run away from us. Uh, but Beast Game GX is the main selling point of this guy. You do 50 for a grass, and if you take a knockout, uh, you get to take an additional prize card. So again, I'm going to mention the 220 baseline. 220 becomes 270 with a Beast Game, um, so we can uh, steal an extra prize off of our opponent to like close the game a little bit quicker. Also, of course, Beast Energy is live in here, um, so you can knock out things like Jirachis and stuff for two prizes. And that can sometimes be amazing against things like the Malamar matchup, for example, where we will eventually run out of these Hoopers and making sure that we can make the most out of our other attackers is going to be important. And Beast Game can sometimes really close the game quicker than they expect as well. So very nice against all sorts of non-GX matchups and also really good against Pidgeotto Control. I think we're already very strong against Pidgey Control because we play nine energies and Zebra. Um, but this just makes it so much more easy, just because you can beast game uh, for two prizes instead, <laughs> which is pretty nice. It means you're less, uh, you know, vulnerable to a stamp as well. Like, you don't get stamped to one at the very least, you get stamped to two, and you have Zebra as well to fall back on, so that should be pretty fine. Uh, from there, we have some other basic techs. Um, Jinx, so that we can um, move damage off of things that have been damaged. Uh, to improve our spirit tomb or just move from one spirit tomb to another to make them a little bit faster i find this is really important uh because there's other non-gx's around right now uh, a lot of ability zard players are playing things like turtonator baby blacephalon stuff like that so moving damage from a spirit tomb to another to instantly be able to respond on these non-gx's is actually pretty important so uh the jinx is really nice for that um also it means if we have things like dedene in play or aerodactyl or something like that and we have our own shrine in play you can also take damage off your shrine pokemon to make the spirit tomb stronger as well which is a pretty cool combo you have available to you um essentially the jinx just sort of speeds up this spite process so anguish cry is a faster attack in many ways uh, we have one copy of mew uh, we really don't want to be um dealing with a picaron being able to snipe things like two spirit tomb at once or spirit tomb zeb striker not only for the prize race but also because they jump over sledgehammer so having mew available for that is obviously important it's also pretty good against things like mewtwo 
um, and Blounds, because they can try and pick off Dedene if we've had to play it as well, so Mew is pretty nice for that regard. Um, Psy Power as well can set up some numbers for you if you really need to, um, so yeah, sometimes that could be a little cute card, especially with things like Shrine. Again, it helps us get over the line in certain situations. We're playing Ditto Aerodactyl package in this deck, uh, because I really do respect Picarom, and I think it's actually a hard matchup. Yes, we have Mew, yes, we have Buzz, but there are a lot of situations where they will either be able to take the four prizes, or sorry, go down to four prizes with a non-GX, um, or they can, uh, you know, hit you with a judge or something like that. So it's not that easy for you to find customs and the buzz world and everything on the right turn. So the Aerodactyl is attempting to shore up that matchup a little bit more, knowing that we can wild dive GX at any moment in the game, as long as Ditto's in the deck, um, and really just put them back a ways especially because the Primal Wind's ability um, slows them down even further uh, sometimes. Uh, if you're able to, like, stay in replace, knock out their active and whatnot, they might not even be able to have, like, a response attack on you, which is pretty awesome. This also has free retreat, so there's no worries in just doing the wild dive and getting the way out of there for another attacker. But this is an extra fighting guy that's on top of this to really help out the Picaron matchup. It also puts a shift in against, you know, a handful of other things like Guardian um, and, like, any tag team deck, really. Uh, Mewtwo as well. Um, you can sort of deter them from using Espeon Deoxys against you because, like, say you went first, got Ditto down with, like, an Elm or whatever and start building Spite on your uh, Spirit Tombs. You can then go into Aerodactyl on turn two, even if they've just, like, Welder attached to their active. Wild Dive them for 150, and then they can't just Welder attach and sprinkle your entire back line with Espeon Deoxys. They have to, like, attack through the Aerodactyl and knock that guy out, which buys you a turn to then, you know, like, finish off the Mewtwo that you'd previously hit and stuff, so... Um, it can actually defend against um, Espeon Deoxys, against Mewtwo, in some situations. So that's also pretty nice, because Espeon is a threat, that's for sure. So having Serodactyl in here can really help out against that as well, in uh, some niche situations as well. I think that rounds out the Pokemon, apart from our drawing guys. Obviously, we play Ditto, which can become a Zeb Striker. So we play a cheeky 1-2 line, kind of a split with Ditto. Sprinting is obviously good against Pigeons. Um, it's also just good in general for helping us push a little bit further throughout the deck and making sure we don't just brick off of stamps and judges and stuff. Because we do constantly need to find, you know, like our backup attackers for like the next Spiritomb. Like the faster you get the next one down, the faster you can start building Spite and getting damage going. We're always going to need Hustle Belts. We're digging towards Customs and all that stuff. So Zebra is pretty nice in here. And I still do play Wonder Dene. Um, just helping us push towards Elm on turn one is a big deal. So having Pokecom outs towards drawing a bunch of cards is nice. So we don't just brick on those opening turns. Because again, you want to get the army down early. So we can start building Spite and doing damage. And in other matchups, you know, getting like the Hooper army down and whatnot is always pretty big. So yeah, uh, Dedene is just a nice card to help us push in those opening turns. So we don't just, you know, brick off the opening because our supporter line isn't that thick i'm just playing four elm obviously gets us ditto slash um blitzel and spirit tombs um and then we have the four cynthia and the three erica erica is a really strong card against everything that isn't a greens deck um so i think this is a nice option to have in here uh, much better than lily i think because we often opt to elm anyway on those opening turns so i think erica makes a little bit more sense for me here uh it's quite a high count of erica one of the highest for like any deck i've played um, but it really does help work towards like custom catcher combos and keep us digging throughout the game as well so uh, also it's usually live because we've like sprinted away sometimes and erica gets you back into a decent shape so that's also something to bear in mind. For trainers, there's not too much going on. We have a thin support of Jirachi. Like, I feel like we can only play three Jirachis because we have two Switch, two board. Sometimes, you know, you'd, you'd more usually see, like, four Jirachi, three Switch. We don't have that luxury of space, so we're having, like, a cheeky line of um, switching outs for Jirachi. We've got the customs for bringing up things that we can knock out easily, like the Denes and whatnot, and get ahead in the prize race, or just finish off things that we've previously damaged. For Com is a really important card in this deck. Obviously, you have synergy with Elm, um, and you have synergy with a few other things here and there. And, you know, 22 Pokemon means we're basically live the entire game, which is awesome. For Hustle Belt, for damage modifying with our Spirit Team, so that we actually slap stuff around uh, in random spots. It can work on your other attackers as well if you tank hits. Uh, the Beast Energy is great for sledging and beast gaming. Um, the Rainbows work on the Spirit Team's great, and some of our other attackers like Duskmane. 
Um, then we have three copies of unit, obviously the fighting and dark being applied here so we can use the Aerodactyl and Buzzwall a little bit better. I still do play one copy of physical dark just because there are still Viridians out there in Malamar and I like getting the value of that. Um, so it's a little bit cheeky from me, but yeah, we are going to have one copy of that uh, for the Hooper. So for other things you could put into this deck, there are actually even more options out there available to you. Um, one pretty funny one is Alolan Ninetales. Um, because we do play the unit energies uh, and we play ditto, uh, we could add this in and basically just have an auto win against Guardian if we really want to. We're basically trying to be like somewhat of a counter box right now with our Pokemon line. So if you want to squeeze in an Alolan Tails, that could be another way of going around it. Um, in terms of other trainer cards and stuff, things I'd want, uh, maybe like another Switch, uh, things like Adventure Bag is actually a card that I've wanted to squeeze in here, just to be that like fifth switching out, um, whilst also helping you like develop Hustle Belts early and just like get them out of the deck, thin them, and just draw more cards off of that. Um, potential other supporters, Copycat's one that I've like experimented with a little bit, it's kind of hit and miss as you could imagine. And there's actually Misty's Determination which a lot of people have forgotten but it's actually back in the format and um, it's actually like not terrible in this deck, it's not like great though. Um, I might squeeze one of these in over like one of the Erica's again, this is just a like card that I've loved to play in the past in like a few decks here and there and I could definitely see it like going back in as a one-off once again but yeah, that's going to be the list. Uh, we'll get into some games now. Uh, one of my roommates, well, my housemate, he uh, he plays a lot of Spiritomb. Um, he played it for Worlds uh, in day two. And he's basically stuck with it like the entire time. So I've got an unusually large amount of testing against Spiritomb at the very least. And it was a consideration for me at Worlds as well, believe it or not. So um, I have... A silly amount of spirit team experience and all that experience has brought me to a very odd list <laughs> overall um basically through my friends trial and error that's how it is oh yeah you could also consider um pokemon fan club in this deck maybe a split with elms um because it obviously gets things like hooper early it gets um dedene as well in those opening hands so that can be pretty important looks like we got a decent start here we've got jirachi we've got elm everything we need really uh, we'll hold off on Ditto right now, because we don't really know what we're up against just yet. So we'll have a wait and see. Looks like it is going to be Mewtwo. Mewtwo going first is obviously very scary. They have the potential to SBDO spread us straight out the gates. This is the matchup that you're trying to dodge as Spiritomb for the most part. I think it's the hardest matchup you can face of the main meta decks out there right now. Especially if they're able to develop... Welder on one. If they don't welder on one, we can be a little bit more safe and secure about ourselves. But right now, it's not feeling great to be sat in our shoes. The good news is our start is very strong. Um, we even have that ditto that we can try and put down to try and evolve into Aerodactyl. There is somewhat of a fear of putting that down against Mewtwo's because they still can be packing the wobs sometimes. Um, but since a lot of the Reshizards have been... Um, cutting a lot of energy for like fire crystals and baby blown uh the wob's not like staple in the list anymore by any means the opponent's able to dead change and now they find themselves the welder on the second time of asking with the gear just for one though so that's a pretty safe number it means i won't get fully espion deoxys wrecked straight out the gate they do have distortion door which is a little bit scary that's extra um snipe damage so they can potentially do like 120 next turn worth of spread so even at the low count of energy it's very scary to deal with SBDO early against Mewtwo looks like the opponent's going to cherish ball for a then they're going to mind report a welder to the top and send it our way alrighty a second com isn't a bad draw either let's start things off with the elm I think it is still our optimal turn one here uh, we'll see what we got. We got the zebras going on. Aerodactyl is in the deck. We have two hoopers to play with. We have Buzzmosa. Alrighty. All of the catches are here. Both shrines are here. Beast energy is in the deck. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One energy prize. That's our unit. One of our units. Alright. We're going to go this way about it. And then we're going to calm am i gonna calm am i just gonna hold this hand hmm i guess i see what we stellar wish if i stellar wish for a supporter card i can probably calm away to dene 
If I Stellar Wish a Switch card, we can try and get some Hooper pressure early. Let's see what the Stellar Wish brings. Mm, a support card and a switch card. We have the opportunity for either now. Uh, because Hooper's doing good pressure straight out the gates. Hooper is doing good pressure. Yep, I like the pressure. So we're going to do this. I think it's the ditto that I don't bench straight away. We're not being threatened by the SBDO. So I don't think we need to put it down just yet. I think that's what gets calmed in. We'll try and get some early Hooper smack going. I'll still build Spite, even though we can get blown out by SBDO. Putting both these down to 50 means he could just welder and take two prizes, which would be scary, admittedly. But I don't feel like playing around it. <laughs> I'm going to hold this hand rather than Dede change it away. Because um, we could con for Zebra if I really want to. We want to try and not put GXs down if we can. And we need to react to what he does, to be honest, a little bit more than just go YOLO Dede change here. Keeping Rainbow Energies is pretty premium for our Spirit Team math. So they're able to, obviously they, they put the welder on top of their deck, so they can hearth away that Silver Leo. They can go for that welder. They have a little Marshadow down. Let's see what else they can come up with here. They're going to attach to the bench. A psychic Energy. Always got to be fearful of Psychic Energies, because they put a shift in against us for sure. They currently aren't representing anything that can knock us out, though. Turbo Strike is still scary, uh, because they hit us for 100, and then that can get swept up in SB on Deoxys damage, too. We're basically living in fear of SBDO. <laughs> That's the long and short of it, to be honest. They're going to grab my cargo. This could be a way they can knock out Hooper in one turn. It is expensive for them, but they can do it. Yep, they're going to bounce their own stadium. Reading away Cargo for another Psychic. And now they can Lava Flow. They can Custom for one by the looks of things. Maybe they should have just not got the Psychic Energy. Depends what the hand is. Just going to see the Lava Flow here. They want to knock out the Hooper Quick Sharp by the looks of things. Which sounds fine. We get to build some more Spite. Looks like we're looking at about 160 this turn. Unless I want to go for some Jinx Shenans. Um, I think I definitely do want to go for Jinx Shenans. Let's go for some uh, Spite building. So 180 is our goal. We're at 3, 6, 9, 10. So yeah, we would need Jinx plus Belt to get ourselves over there. I feel like I want to Stellar Wish before this Com. Um... How do we get rewarded by this? We get rewarded by finding Hustle Belt or any... Hmm, maybe I should just draw one and Dedo change. Let's draw... Okay. If we draw any Pokemon, we get rewarded by this. Okay, nice. Alright. Let's do it this way. Let's just try and big dig. Seeing a lot of cards this turn. I want to evolve out the Blitz at least out of uh, scary spread range. Hustle Belt's there. And now we're just looking for um, a Pokecom to find Jinx, basically. Let's draw off of Erica. I don't think I want to bin either of these Pokemon. Uh, the Viridian would give us better odds, but I could sprint afterwards as well, don't forget. Um, maybe I'm just going to be sat on this hand for a little bit. Let's get rid of this Mew. We have two Pokecoms in the deck. Not huge odds. Even a Shrine's a good pickup, to be honest. Let's see what these five bring us. Shrine is there. No Pokecom just yet. Let's try and Stellar Wish. 
Okay, so we do miss the Pokecon, which is a bit of a shame. Um, do I want just more Elms? I think I want Cynthia. They have played two stadiums, so this shrine sticking would be ideal. Um, I can't put any more Spiritombs down, which is a bit of a fear factor here. But we are putting a decent amount of pressure on this turn. I've built Spite as much as I can. Okay, we'll swing. We'll put him a little couple damage away. Us damaging our own Dedene can help us out with... Um, What's it called later as well? Jinx. That's a small interaction that you can always bear in mind. But basically, the complexion of the game has gone completely differently just because we started a Hooper. It meant he couldn't Sogaleo. And if he had Sogaleo, he'd have like so many more energies in play. It would be disgusting. All right, he's able to treasure for SBDO here. He's going to attach to the active... Did I change away? Espeon Deoxys. And oh, he chose to attach the fire and not the psychic. That's very good news. <laughs> that is very good news for us. Obviously, he can marshal away the shrine right now. We're going to be looking for some customs. <clears throat> oh, he finds a stadium replacement. That works too. Mew could have been another option if I had chose to keep that in my hand. Looks like the Turbo Strike's coming in. Okay, so he's setting up this for the big Espeon Deoxys play. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. He's trying to go the whole, whole shebang. Alright. Let's have a think how I want to navigate this turn. This turn, I could be going for something like a Sogaleo smack onto the benched Mewtwo. Um, that would be uh, sorry, not a Sogaleo smack. A Dustmane smack would be ideal. Get some damage on that guy. Also, be like a chunky hit point Pokemon that he can't just like rail on instantly. It's basically just Pokecoms as our outs though, which isn't great. Do I Cynthia first? I could half the way Absol, that's a useless card, and just Cynthia. And then potentially have Sprint Stellowish. I think that might be our best move, rather than just digging five cards deep to find this one guy. Oh, it's actually not in the deck. Oh boy, okay, that's scary. Hmm. Alright, let's figure this out. Well then, Custom is our best draw, for sure. We already have one custom in hand, so I guess we're Stellar Wishing first. Um, would I Cynthia if I miss, or would I just Elm and Smack anyway with another Spiritomb with 60 hit points? I guess I'm going to Elm. Take this stuff all out. Try and find a custom. Ugh, no custom. We find Pokecom. Which again isn't the worst. Our opponent's gonna take. Well, he has 7, 18. Nothing's 22. So I can't put a spirit room down. I guess I take the calm. Oh, let's think about this. Yeah, I guess we we just Hooper Smack here. It's probably our best move. It's a shame we weren't able to work the maths in much better, but... And let's think of some numbers. If I put another 6 down, he can go... 4, 10, 17, so that doesn't matter too much. If I put it 5 down, he can go 4, 9, so I can't spite if I bench, and I can't bench Ditto because then he can take 3 prizes. 
Alright, I guess I just swing. There's no point in benching a spirit room if I'm not going to spite him up. So we've had to three shot the first Mewtwo, which isn't looking great. There's our, our Dust Mane. Certainly would have been a good turn to Dust Mane there, which is a shame. The opponent with only 10 cards left in their deck, they'll almost certainly have access to Welder. How many fires do they have left? Oh, it looks like they just got rid of a there's three, four, five, six. Then we can do some treasuring. Get rid of a Jirachi, get a Naga. Acrobike. They're going deeper for some reason. Another Mewtwo comes down. Psychic energy. Catcher's coming in. Or for draw? Or for draw one. Cherish ball. Wow, he might be out of energies. In terms of he can't do the big Espeon Deoxys play. He only has five cards left in his deck. Possibly Recycle System is one of his bottom cards. He might be going for a Naga Snipe onto Dene here for two prizes. It's in his hand currently, not his, not his discard. Might be another Lava Flow play, but then he'll be running out of energy cards. Wow, okay. Well, Lava Flow is great for us again, because it now means Espeon Deoxys for the full value is off the table once more. And we get to Stellar Wish again, which is always great. Alright, let's think this through. I want to start playing around Stamp if I can. So let's toss that. Let's still a wish. See what we're working with. More belts are never a bad thing. Is another Hooper just ever right uh, ever wrong here? I think another Hooper's just good here, right? It's basically the same position we put him in. We make him have more energy cards. He's got five cards left in deck only. This might just be a case of us out-resourcing him. He may have gone too overzealous with the lava flows. He can't weld him much more because he'll deck out. There's still the recycle system option. He has away a Naga this time. He's then going to recessing hole for board space. Is he going for a, G a Giratina play here so he can get more damage in play? I'm going to see a switch into Mewtwo. Custom for one. He definitely seems to be in a spot of bother here. We haven't played any switch cards our own end, have we? No, we still have both our switch. He's just ending up passing into us. We actually draw switch. That's nuts. That's so good. Definitely puts pressure on him. Still a wish. All great cards here. All great cards. I feel like winning the game is probably pretty good though. Uh, we can build Spite. 369. Looks like they got a little bit too excited with Mewtwo. The Hoopers saw us through. Nice, nice. Yeah, he was really lacking that sort of middle attacker to get over the Hoopers, and he benched heavily as well. Looks like he ran out of steam. Maybe prized a few too many energies. That can be a factor with Mewtwo. They do get pretty low in deck size, especially against non-GX decks. Because they're used to just going full steam ahead with, you know, Charizard into Makago, into Shake the Hand. Alrighty, let's get another game. 
being able to clutch a win against Mewtwo is always a good feeling, because that's the thing we're most afraid of as Spiritomb. We get to start Jirachi again. Always lucky. We do need it, though, this time, that's for sure. Hand isn't looking spectacular. Let's see what we're up against. I see another Psychic Deck box, which isn't good news. Oh, we're against Turbo Dark. This should be a pretty fine matchup. Super Scoop-Ups might be a little bit sketchy. Um, yeah, this is one of the last Scoop-Up decks out there, but we do have the Dark Pokemon, and I'm pretty sure Aerodactyl will be decent here as well. Another Spirit Team's not a bad draw. Looks like Erica's what we're working with. Over two turns, I'll be able to lower this hand size enough for Erica. There are setup decks, so it should be fine. I'm not too scared of any spread. I'm not scared of any reason to put these down. Yeah, we should have time to build Spite and be powerful here. Really good opener. As long as they're able to have a decent turn on their own end. I mean, if they're not, we can still wish again and hope for a Cynthia. All right, they're going to cherish. Looks like they've got a Hooper for Rogue Ringing for the ideal cards they look for. We already saw Beast Ring in their, in their opening hand, so we know that'll be something they'll look for. Ultra Space actually helps us out quite a bit, to be honest. We've even got Beast Energy in hand. Um, that's a potential addition to our deck. If we had space for a third Stadium, I don't think it would be a third Shrine. I think it would be an Ultra Space. Let's you get Buzzwell on the right turn. Let's do a lot of things. They are starting to fill this bench up quite nicely, which I'm pretty happy with. Erica's going to get some value. They're just going to rogue ring. Grab their stage ones and all that stuff. We've got a backup Cynthia for next turn. So we do have the option of double rainbow energying this Spiritomb to take a Hoopa knockout like out the gate if we want to. It turns out, ooh, double customing Sneasel sounds epic as well. We'll grab this guy. I feel like it's fine to bench him so I can get the Erica value. Shrine is pretty cool. We're definitely looking for a switching option off this Stellar Wish. Nice. Definitely feels like gusting up this Sneasel sounds very correct, because we'll gust up the Sneasel, then we'll take a two-prize knockout on this guy, and then we just need to knock out one tag team for, like, win. So this all sounds great. Keeping Shrine in play is irrelevant currently for us knocking out this guy. So we'll keep it for an extra turn so I can get the big daddy... Well, I can get the baby buzz out of the deck. It's pretty awesome. All right. Oh, there's the big daddy buzz. That's another option for us. We could um, avoid B-string if we want to. I could hit for 160 and then Beast game. Oh, wow. Rogue Ring getting him the Dark Ride Prism Star is a pretty cool option. That's a nice bit of burst acceleration. But he needs to try and Cynthia for a Sneasel by the looks of things. He can space for a Nag. And then Poke Comet back in for a Sneasel. Sounds good. Sounds good. High rolling those customs early is definitely good for us in terms of what he can do. Really does limit him for a turn. By us time. Dark Red Prism Star might be one of those cards that we are forced to get through, but we probably will be able to do it with the Baby Buzz, so that should be fine. Or with our Spirit Team on the bench now. Our numbers are looking pretty solid. They're going to manually attach to that Dark Red Prism as well, and they are just going to Rogue Ring. So we'll be three prizes up. Concerns right now are that I don't have many ways to stamp proof myself. So, Elming for Blitzel Ditto could definitely be very strong. 
So just double anguish cry, Elm for Blitzel Ditto, and another Spirit Tomb just to thin it. That should be a pretty good turn. That should be a pretty good turn for sure. Uh, let's just make sure the Ditto and stuff is in here. The Ditto Dactyl is in here, and we have Blitzel. Awesome. Yeah, this is this is gonna work out. Let's get this guy. Let's do this. He probably has got a stamp for us because he has Rogue Ringed. That's if he chooses to play stamp. But the Rogue Ring builds like mostly do. I want to say. We have a backup building spite. We build spite on the active. I'll keep this space around just because I still don't see any reason to put Shrine into play. So we'll just take this big knockout. They'll probably try and swing with a Dark Ray this turn. Maybe just give us a non GX army to deal with for a few turns. It's probably what they're going to try and do. Let's see. Alright, Beast Ring coming in. Weavile in play now. They can do all sorts against us. Peck is enough to take a knockout on us. So that could even be their choice. If they do go for a peck, we could beast game GX it for two prizes though, which is pretty funny. It's like a good play from our opponent, but we punish it super heavily here. <laughs> the only issue with beast gaming is that I won't have Aerodactyl, but I don't think it's a big deal. I think he's locked into just trying to non-GX us for the rest of the game. Yeah, this beast, like, people just don't know what to play around in Spiritomb, right? It's just such a wild card deck. Like, that was such a clever move from him, and it just gets super hard punished by this. I'd be surprised if he doesn't concede after seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Out you go. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Dark Fox not like a super popular deck anymore. I think it'll definitely come back when red and blue becomes a thing. Stock up on sneak on uh, Weavile's now while you can. Thicker Weavile lines. But not today. Not today. This could be a Quagnag. It's like the only thing with blue sleeves these days. Um, going f second, I think I'd still do this. If it is a Quagnag, we have the potential to high roll a rainbow energy off of like the Dene, Cynthia and stuff. If we high roll a rainbow, we can take the first knockout and sometimes that's just good enough to win us the game. Looks like we are up against Quagnag. So rainbow energy is like the only thing we care about this turn. We care about it more than an elm. Rainbow would be huge. 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 We have a lot of ultra beasties that can put a shift in as well. Buzzwall can obviously do good stuff against quags. Even nags if we uh, have the beast energy. <clears throat> we obviously don't care about Keldeos at all. Ooh, wow, they're playing beast strings. Cool. Tell me more. Oh, we've been tricked. You snake in the grass. You're playing clowns? Well, clowns is a good matchup for us. It does change what we try and look for, though. I mean, taking this tempo prize is still pretty good. If I can find rainbow... Uh, this hand might just be bad enough to bin, you know. Two Cynthia's are a little bit sketchy, but both of these really don't do much. So I feel like I might be doing this. 
Attaching the dark just it accepts that I'm not knocking out Poipol though, which is a bit sad. He doesn't currently have any fires in the discard pile for charge up attack though. Hmm. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. Yeah, I think I want a Dede change. I think it's more important for us to find um, Elm if we can. And I'm going to attach because I think I can just pay retreat into a bigger guy here. Or into a Jirachi. That's also pretty good. We have a second chance for an Elm. I don't think we're in panic mode enough to custom for uh, two of like benching Absol. We'll see what the Stellar brings. Okay, nice. Nice, nice. Let's get the Tomb Army on the go go. Alright, Jirachi's a good start, a good lead, uh, because he can't just turning point. He would have to welder for a mind blown. Cynthia isn't welder, that's a fact, so. The only way he takes a prize is with a burst this turn, which is very good for us. Keeping another Stellar Wish is going to be great, because this hand needs it a little bit. With our board full, we can't instantly knock out this Persephalon in one hit, but I don't mind going for it over two turns. If we do find the Hustle Shrine combo, that's another thing entirely that can help us out. They're going to Ultra Conversion away at Poiple. Treasure away a fire for a poiple. And yeah, they're just going to go for that burst. No surprise there. Get rid of a heat factory, which is pretty good for us. Hustle Belt, Speak of the Devil. It's a very good draw. I should have Stella Wished first, but I basically always do this. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I still take Cynthia, I think. Uh, the tempo of this, though, is pretty significant. 3, 6, 9, 10, 160, 170 with the shrine. It really puts him in a spot of bother. We've seen one stadium just hit the bin. Ooh, it's so tempting. It's so tempting to play for tempo here. I like it. I like it. We still always will have Stellar Wish to fall back on for next turn. We're going to try and put him in a spot. Just insane tempo if we get it off. I think the kicker was because he just had to get rid of a stadium. I think that's the kicker. His hand size isn't huge. He would have ultra spaced had he had seen one in hand. It's always a stadium that he basically proactively plays. Decides to evolve a nag rather than ultra convert. So maybe he has. Okay, he has the Dene. Looks like he's going to go fishing for a stadium. They normally play three stadiums, sometimes four. So we'll see how this goes. They can cherish ball another Blacephalon. They still have supporters. Of course. They're going to convert for three more cards. Welder. Three more cards. Still no sight of Stadium. It's good news for us. They're going to stick some energies on the Naga GX. Ow. 
Acrobike for even more pushing potential. I do really like the addition of Acrobike in Blounds, by the way. I think it's pretty good. It's better than running the subpar supporters. Okay, they do find the Ultra Space amongst all those draws. They're going to grab another Blacephalon now. We're also going to treasure away a gear for another nag. They have a bunch of fires in the bin that they can start charging up. Got the charge ups. And we will see the mind blown. So our ideal attacker is like a Hooper here. Again, we get to build Spite more on the bench. Uh, Mew would also be pretty good. Rainbow Energy off the top. Oh, I could even do the Dust Main. Yeah, Dust Main is good. He's tanky enough. He can't just be killed with a Nag, basically. It would force a Blown into the active. I'm to use a rainbow as a bit of a pity. We'll see if we can get uh, Erica instead. This gives us the chance to sprint this hand, so we'll take the opportunity for sure. Uh, I think I'll protect Ditto. What cards do I want to draw off Custom Catcher that I could pitch? It's only really like excess Pokemon at this point that I want to get rid of. Any energy draw is really bad for me. Yeah, I think I'll just sprint. I don't need the extra card. Or two cards. Well, those are excess Pokemon that I don't want to draw into. <laughs> oh well. This is fine. We're keeping up in the race. Forcing him to use a GX next turn. We're a little scared if he goes for a Naga Snipe onto Dene. That's where we're most afraid. Um, because we currently don't have a switch in hand. But this might force him to be string to a Blown and swing into us with that guy. Also, if he customs and turning points, that's also a little bit scary. Because we want to go through as few non-GXs as possible. There's the nag. Looks like they're gearing up for another ultra conversion. They are going to put down a blown. They might want to be string before they ultra convert. Welder two, that works. See how they're going to go about this. Here come the B strings. The deck's actually pretty thin, only 12 cards. Uh, looks like they're setting up that Naga snipe. Scary times. It's probably the best move they can make here. Unless it's customs. Customs is also a good turn. Oh, okay. This is good for us. This is good for us. For sure. Huh, so they could have done the Naga thing. Looks like they're saving it for another turn. Alrighty. Haven't seen any gust from them whatsoever either. Spirit Team is pretty much the best draw I could hope for here, I think. Let me scout with this. I don't think I want to put anything else into play here. I think I just want more Spirit Teams into play. Yeah. 
I'm again going to try and save this ditto, just in case I need to have another sprint involved. I think this is the card that can go. Aerodactyl is not needed. Let's gallop. I know we'll have fewer cards, but we're seeing nine. We need to find energy, of course. Energy Hustle Belt Erica is about the best thing we could have seen here. Really insane. So we'll go to four on each of these. Um, if I... Oh, let, let's do this first. Custom sounds good. We're at 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, so I have to commit the belt no matter what. So we'll do this way around. We'll swing for 190. Potentially a debate for us to try and get the customs used now, but we'd still have to use them again later. Because he's always going to non-GX attack us, right? He'll try and non-GX attack us this turn, and then try and set up the Venom shot for game. Mew, unfortunately, did have to go to the, have to go to the discard. Maybe that was worth protecting over the Ditto, actually, thinking about it now. Yeah, the Ditto was never going to get there. Yeah, that was probably a mistake from me. But he's also not played any customs yet, so it, it's like nitpicky. Pretty sure he has Gust available to him now at any point, because there's still four customs rattling around and they have, you know, only ten cards left in the deck. I'm going to Cherish Ball. Looks like they're just playing all these cards to play around. Stamp. From my end. More charge ups coming in. And a Cynthia. Now I can space convert. Three more cards. Oh, they can poke gear too, it's guaranteed. For whatever they choose. Acrobike as well. They're really digging for something. Chose not to take any supporter from the gear and then acrobat away a welder. Now the Ultra Conversion. So they've set themselves up set themselves up for two turn win. As long as I can't win next turn. But they don't have reset stamp. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16 currently. And I need 19. So I need to find a Hustle Belt. We have played two. Oh wait, I can... No, 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 no. Yeah, we've got two left in the deck. Okay, cool. So we'll attach this, rather than building spite and knocking ourselves out. Um, we'll play our customs. Oh wait, I can just win on Dodene, right? Why am I focused on this guy? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, yeah, yeah, we're there. Counting it triple, triple times over. Nice. All right. It's a Spiritomb sweep for us today. Awesome. So let me know what you guys think about the wacky build. There's a lot going on. I wouldn't question if you disliked some random one-offs that I was playing. Um, but at least you see the power of a non-GX deck right now. Um, we're able to beat a Mewtwo that kind of ran themselves out of steam thanks to the Hooper army. Um, we are able to beat a Blounds, which is one of your favorable matchups for sure. Um, and what else did we face? Was that one of the deck that I faced? I can't remember. But anyways, I feel like the games have gone long because non-GX etc. 
Wait, is, is that our third game or our second? Why am I forgetting a game? Oh yeah, we played Dark Box, right? Yeah, yeah, we played Dark Box. That should also be a pretty good game in theory, so... There are worse ones out there for you. Um, you basically have to ignore the Spirit Tombs for the most part when you're up against Malamar. Um, sometimes use him for early tempo prizes on, like, Inkes and Jirachis and stuff. Obviously, uh, you even knock out Giratina thanks to weakness in those opening turns. So nothing's safe on that opening turns, really, against Spirit Tomb. So you can try and get those early punches in with him, um, let him go down, let Hooper do the rest of the work with Absol. Um, I think some of your worst matchups are things like Guardian. Uh, they have so much healing. Uh, Greenzard as well, if that's still a thing. Obviously awkward, but you can definitely do okay against some of the dark decks. Uh, sorry, some of the... Uh, tag team decks out there that have a lot less healing so yeah let me know what you guys think about this deck below and um i'll be coming at you with another wacky deck tomorrow cheers